Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the Bible class of the Church of Jesus Christ. We are on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are on our pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise Leslie. Our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor, and Sister Melinda Taylor. Our pastoral assistants, Evangelist Margaret Williams, Evangelist Doris Thompson. We'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And now at this time, our pastor is going to come with the opening prayer, and he will introduce our teacher. And then I'll close it off with a few announcements, and then we're here for Bishop Leslie again for final remarks and benediction. Now let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly we thank the Lord for the opportunity he's given us to gather together and to eat our spiritual food. We've had our natural food all day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some snacks in between. But now it's time for us to eat spiritually. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, yes. again, we're so glad for the fellowship that we're having. My God, gathering around the table to eat your food that you prepared for us. My God, bless our teacher, Lord. Give him exactly what we have need of. And then help us to hear so that our souls can live. And after we receive the words of God, help us, Lord, to understand when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we use the word against the enemy. Bless us and let us be blessed. We ask you to do this for us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And again, we're thanking the Lord for the opportunity and thank the Lord for the space that the Lord is giving us to study his word. God's word is to be esteemed more highly than our necessary food. We thank the Lord for our teacher, assistant pastor, district elder Robert Taylor. And we're going to open up our hearts and receive the word as it comes to us from our district elder in, at this time. God bless you, district elder Taylor. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Bishop. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And we want to say praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, Amen. We're so honored to be back in the house of the Lord one more time to mingle our voices with those of you who are sanctified and those of you who love the Lord, love Jesus. We praise God for another day that he has blessed us. And my, uh, you know, key scripture that always comes to my mind, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And because his compassions fail not, but they're new every morning, great is the faithfulness of God. Amen. We thank God for being so faithful uh, in so many ways and at so many times, uh, in so many places. God is always faithful. We do honor our bishop and pastor this evening. Uh, I might sound a little hoarse, but that is, is, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, but we do honor our bishop and pastor this evening, uh, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr., and to uh, his wife, Lady Louise Leslie. We praise God for you. Uh, in the name of the Lord, and praise God for our companion this evening, uh, Sister Melinda, and all the great people of God. We thank God for each and every one of you who tune in so faithfully each and every week uh, to hear uh, the, this Bible teaching. Um, we thank God. We've been talking about um, total forgiveness and complete healing, total forgiveness and complete healing. Uh, when everything in you wants to hold a grudge, you know, God wants us to just lay it aside, let it go give it up. Uh, don't hold it in. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You know, we quote all of these good scriptures and uh, they're very important in the life of a child of God. Uh, but we have to understand that we just can't quote scripture. Uh, we got to obey scripture. We have to apply scripture to our lives each and every day and each and every, actually each and every moment, uh, we have to apply scripture to our lives. Uh, you just can't apply it to your life when you want it you know, when you want it to apply to your life, but uh, even when you don't want it, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, preachers be preaching, they say, if you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> uh, but even, even when you don't want to apply it to your life, you got to apply this word of God to your life because it is so very important and it's vital to our spiritual uh, being uh, that we take all of God's word and make application with it each and every day and each and every hour, each and every moment. Uh, you know, we just can't allow, we just can't allow uh, uh, ourselves to think and to say and to go and to do things uh, without, without considering uh, the results from it, according to the word of God. And so that's why we want to look at total forgiveness and complete healing. You know, our key scripture when we started out was in the uh, 18th chapter of Matthew. Uh, and I just want to read a few of those verses, verse number 15, uh, chapter 18 of Matthew, verse number 15. Uh, it says, moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go to, to and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. You hear that? 
between you and him alone. Between you and him alone. Nobody else is involved. Nobody else has to even know. Oh, they may, they may think something is between you. They may think something was said or happened between you. But in essence, they don't even have to know. But what they should see is the two of you fellowshipping as if nothing had happened. But keep on reading. If he hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he would not hear thee, then take with thee one or two witnesses that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. These two witnesses that you take with you, they don't need to know anything until you get to the individual that you're going to see. Don't tell them, don't give them a heads up on anything because they don't need to know until they get to the point where the two of you who are involved begin to converse and say what you have to say to each other. And so out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, and these witnesses are going to, they're going to testify. No, this did happen. Now, don't be a false witness like those false witnesses we just learned about in Sunday school concerning Jesus' trials and all. Don't be a false witness, but be a true witness of God and bring back a true report. This is what happened. This is what was said, okay? Uh, verse number 16, if he, uh, 17, if he neglect to hear thee, then tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a public. In other words, if he don't want to hear what the pastor has to say, then what more can be done to him and for him from the standpoint of the church? Absolutely nothing. And so, and you know, and I, I mentioned last week, I believe, or, or in passing, that in time past, uh, these individuals, uh, if they really wanted to be saved uh, and came up with this attitude, they would have to, ha they would find themselves on the back pew. And, and everybody knew that anybody that sat on the back pew, uh, there was something wrong that they did. There's something that, there's something that they're being punished for. You know, we can't do it today because the ushers and everybody else sit on the back pews today, don't they? <laughs> and so, uh, but but uh, in, instead of instead of really excommunicating, instead of putting him out of the church, okay? Yes, he's been exonerated. He's been excused from all of his duties in the church. You know, and sometimes I think we make I think we make bad uh, decisions sometimes and still allowing people to work in the church on the auxiliaries and doing things in the church when they are in sin, when they have unforgiveness in their hearts. Lord, have mercy. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I really, I think we make bad decisions sometimes, uh, whether it be of leadership, whether it be of, uh, of getting, uh, toward one another. I think sometimes we make bad decisions in allowing because because we don't we don't want uh, we don't want anybody to know, okay. Uh, but but if something wrong has been done, if there's forgiveness in an individual's heart, then something has to be done to that individual. If he will not, if he won't, if he won't do a one on one, if he don't uh, listen to the uh, or realize that the witnesses are going to take back a true report, if he realizes that. The church, the pastor can't do anything for him. Then what more can be done for him or her? But to be now, this word uh, to count them as a heathen man. In other words, relieve them of their spiritual duties in the church building and on and anything pertaining to the church. Relieve them of their duties because you have unforgiveness in your heart and you're still trying to operate uh, in the name of the church. But yet uh, this unforgiveness is really saying that uh, you're, you're in sin and you, don't, <laughs> you want us to forgive you of your sin, but you don't, want, you don't want to come out of your sin. Because if you don't want forgiveness, if you don't want to forgive and you don't want to receive forgiveness, then something is wrong there. Something is wrong. Drop down to verse number 21. Then Peter, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? That's a fair question. And Peter says to seven times. Now he wasn't talking about seven times uh, uh, in, in one day. Peter talking about seven times for the entire time that he knows this individual. 
But look at what Jesus says. I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times 70. In other words, there's no limitation as to how many times you forgive your brother or your sister. Please uh, allow that word, brother, to be generic uh, tonight. So there's no limitation as to how many times you forgive. As many times as forgiveness calls for, that's how many times you forgive. And, and a lot of times we rather we rather just let it go and have anything, nothing to do with the situation or do with that brother or that sister. But still nothing has been rectified and there's still a problem. There's still a situation between us. You know, the question comes, why is forgiveness so important? Why is it so important? When you look at what Christ did for mankind, when you look at what God did for mankind, God so loved the world. And what did he do? He forgave us. And he allowed his son to be crucified on Calvary's cross just to pay the debt that we owed. And God forgave us. Jesus brought us back into reconciliation because of the forgiveness of sins. And so if he can forgive us that much, why can't we forgive our brother and our sister? It's doable, it's manageable, it can be done. But yet, uh, you know, as, as we said last week in the last couple of weeks, uh, there's a problem with our hearts. And some of these things that we look at when we diagnose that heart, some of the things that we looked at were these right here, some of the conditions that were of the heart. Uh, it was pride, it was fault finding, it was avoidance, it was silence, it was unfaithfulness, it was hopelessness, and it was resentment. And one more I came up with, it was also isolation. Isolation. And so pride, just to go through these real quick, just to, uh, re, uh, just to review, pride, it was the quality of state of being proud, inordinate, self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents and beauty and wealth and rank, et cetera, which manifests itself, look at this, in lofty airs. It, put, it has so much arrogance with it and in distance and reserve and often in contempt of others. In other words, the problem is not me, it's you. But pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. And those who walk in pride, he is able to abase, according to Daniel 4, 37. And that was spoken by King Nebuchadnezzar. And you know the situation with King Nebuchadnezzar, how he thought he was somebody. All proudful, all arrogant. Look at what my hands have done. God said, wait a minute here. <laughs> you know, wait a minute. You know, in, in, in Babylon was one of, the, uh, one of the eight wonders of the world, the hanging gardens of Babylon. And Nebuchadnezzar contributed that, that, that construction to himself. And then that, that image that he, uh, that he had uh, constructed, that head of gold, and God put him in his place. He thumped him upside his head and caused him to go out in the field and wander like an animal for seven years. And he came back and said, uh, the, the most high, the, uh, the almighty God, the most high, he rules in the kingdom of men. And so it brought Nebuchadnezzar so down low. He said, God can abase who he wants to abase. He'll raise up, he'll exalt who he wants to exalt. And so pride, pride, will, pride is one of the things that God hates. And, and we, we, each and every one of us, we need to check ourselves, make sure, is there any pride in me that I'm not aware of? If it is, Lord, help me to see it so I can, so I can, so I can get rid of it. Because I don't want anything in me, and I know you don't want anything in you. We don't want anything in us that's going to bring a reproach upon our God and it cause us to be lost cause us to be in sin and yet thinking that we're serving God, but God is not advancing us at all because of the condition that our hearts are in. And so uh, there, there's, there has to be a diagnostic uh, testing of our hearts. 
His pride is one fault finding, unfavorable judgment, disapproval expressed by pointing out faults or shortcomings, tending to make moral judgments or judgments based on personal opinions. Then there's avoidance when one deliberately avoids another keeping away from or preventing from happening. And all of these have to do with being reconciled to your brother. These are things that, that, that put stoppage in you going to your brother and your brother coming to you. Because keep in mind, it's not just you going to him, but it's he also coming to you. And if both of you have the right attitude, you should meet one another head on because both of you mean well and mean right. And so avoidance is one, silence, forbearance from, or absence of speech mute, muteness, speech muteness. Don't say anything, don't want to say anything, just want to let it go. I ain't got to say nothing. I wasn't wrong. They were wrong. He was wrong. She was wrong. I ain't got to say anything, so I'm just going to keep silent. I'm going to keep on serving the Lord, and I'm going to keep silent because it ain't me, the problem ain't me, it's them. So I keep silent. And sometimes the individual who you have an art against or you think has an art against you may not even be aware of the, of, of the, of the brevity of the situation between you. And because it wasn't addressed, and that's another point, because it wasn't addressed at the time that it happened, then he may not, or she may not be aware that there's a problem there. It may not be aware that they said it in the wrong way or expressed it with the wrong, with the wrong attitude. They may not be aware of that, but you took it as if they did. And because of that, you got an attitude. You, uh, you, 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 you don't want anything now to do with them because they didn't talk to you. They didn't say that the right way to you. <laughs> so why is, it, why is forgiveness so important? It's very important. It's very important. God wants his children. He wants his children to, ha to, have, to have fellowship with one another. Not, not, not saying, not staying back, not, not, not isolating yourself, you know, not, not, not contributing to the auxiliary because of your attitude toward lead, your leader. Just because you're not the president or you're not one of the officers, then you're not going to come to the meeting. The blood of Jesus is against that attitude. What, what does it look like? What does it look like if, what if all of us wanted to be leaders? What if all of us wanted a position on the auxiliary? What if all of us wanted to, what if all of us wanted to be pastors? All of us wanted to be preachers. You know, some churches got, ain't nobody in the church but preachers. <laughs> what, what, what if all of us wanted to have some kind of position on the auxiliary? Well, who's going to help out the auxiliary? Where is the other information going to come from? If all of us want to be, want a position, and all of us uh, want information from people in the auxiliary, but all the people in the auxiliary want a position and has a position, then where's the information going to come from? See, we don't, we can't not, don't allow the adversary to influence us from not engaging in because of, uh, uh, because of the position that we don't have. You understand? Don't let the, don't give the adversary that, don't give him that leverage. Because he, if he sees that and he knows he can put a wedge in between you and the leader, then he'll do all that he can to raise your attitude level. He'll do all he can to stir up your spirit. But they don't want to listen to me. You know, they don't want to do what I say. You know, they, don't, they, they don't want my suggestions. Yes, they do. 
That's just the adversary telling you that. Yes, they do. And when suggestions are offered, when the opportunity is offered, then give your suggestion. You know, Mr. Robin Little years ago, he told me something, he showed me something. And what he showed me was this. Here he is, he's a bishop in the Pentecostal churches of the Apostolic Faith Association Incorporated. He's a bishop. But one thing he said uh, when he came to our church one Bible class night, he says, I, 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 don't have to, I don't have to be the leader. You know, he, you know, you know how Bishop Little talk, he talks so proper, those of you that know him. He said, I don't have to be the leader. He says, I'm a pusher. If I see something, uh, if I see somebody going in the right way, I know how to push them. But how many of you know how to push people? How many, how many of you, 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 know, you don't have to be the leader, but you know how to push people. You know how to help them to succeed. You know how to help them to get from point A to point B. You know how to help them. And because of that, that leadership ain't even in your mind. Just give me a job to do, and I'm, I'm going to try to make our auxiliary look good. I'm going to try to make uh, the ministry look good. I'm going to try to make the kingdom of God look good. Just give me something to do. Or uh, give, give, me, give, me, give me some leverage so I can go this way, or I can do this, I can do that. But the adversary, y'all, the adversary, he tries his best to influence. He tries to separate and divide. And God, at the same time, trying to add and multiply and to abound. And so another one was unfaithfulness, the quality of being disloyal, not true to duty or obligation or promises. And then there's hopelessness, which is despair, the feeling that everything is wrong and nothing will turn out right. You ever cross paths with somebody that had that kind of attitude? No, oh, they ain't no hope. Ain't no hope for us. There's no, there's no way we can fellowship again. There's no way. There's no way we can reconcile this. There's no way we can do it. There's no, there's no way, there's no way I can forgive them for what they did to me. And I'm talking about two saints of God. I can understand that with people out in the world, you know, and, and, and that's another thing. Even people out in the world. You got to forgive them too. Now, granted, granted, then they're not saved. Then, you know, but the Bible don't mean a whole lot to them. But even some of the unsaved, at least some of them do know how to forgive. And some of them will tell you, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to say that. But you and I, as saints of God, if anybody should know how to forgive, it should be us. What if Jesus had not forgiven us of our sins? What if he had not forgiven us when we did wrong? So he forgive us as much as we forgive others. If you don't forgive others, then the, your heavenly father is not going to forgive you. It, you, might not, you might not think that's the truth, but that's the Bible. That is the Bible hopelessness. Then there's resentment. Resentment is the state of holding something in the mind as a subject of contemplation or of being inclined to reflect upon something. A state of consciousness, conviction, a feeling of deep and bitter anger and ill will. You're always going to remind them. You know, we talked about earlier about, you know, how can you tell that somebody has totally forgiven you when they stop reminding you of it, when they stop bringing it up, uh, when they uh, when they start fellowshipping with you and loving one another uh, like nothing has happened between you, that's when you know that there's total forgiveness there. Otherwise, if they keep bringing it up. You keep holding it in their mind. No, you don't forget it because it happened. It's in your mind. It's in your memory bank. But you can put it so far back. You can archive it. In fact, Put it in archives and burn the archive up. And so there's resentment. 
And that one last item I told you about isolation is a state of separation between the persons or group of persons or the state, state of lacking unity. That's what isolation does to an individual. When you don't want to get anything together, when you don't want to forgive and you don't, you're not asking for forgiveness, what you do, you isolate yourself. You isolate yourself, not just from the person that you have an art against or he against you, but you isolate yourself at times uh, from the church as a whole. And this is wrong on your part. This is very wrong because what's going to happen is when you isolate yourself, the adversary is going to, he's, he's going to talk to your mind. Lord, have mercy. He's going to talk to your mind. He's going to talk a hole in your head. And he's going to show you everything that's wrong in church. He's going to show you everything that's wrong about that individual. When you isolate yourself, you're out there by yourself. But you know what? You remember the old saying, no man is an island and no man stands alone. We are our brother's keeper. But if you isolate yourself, you don't want nobody near you. You can't, don't allow anybody to get next to you. Then the adversary is going to play havoc on your mind. And so these are the reasons why forgiveness amongst us as saints of God is so vitally important. This is why. And that's the diagnostic testing of the heart and of our attitude. You know, we, we, I'm pointing here at the heart, but really it's our attitude, our inner being, our inner heart, our mindset. That's the attitude of our heart. When we have these things in place in our hearts, then total forgiveness basically is out the door. And so tonight, let's go a little bit further. Let's go a little bit further tonight. And so how, how to begin, how do we begin reconciliation? How do we begin it? Because the process a reconciliation can only occur when both parties are willing to listen without interrupting each other. You understand? Reconciliation, the process of it's a process. And, and it's when both parties can, can talk to each other without interrupting each other. You have your say, and then I have my say. Now, I'm not going to try to talk or just try to straighten you out or try to correct you while you're talking but we're going to hear each other out. We're going to hear each other. Well, what, what, what was the, what was the problem? What was the thing that caused the problem amongst us or between us in the first place? Let us hear out our, each of our stories. And so they both need to be respectful and understand that there are two sides to every story. There are two sets of feelings, yours and mine that need to be understood. And there are two hearts that need to be healed because our hearts are not healed if there's a problem between us. Now you might feel that you're all right, but because the situation has not been rectified between us, then there's a problem, there's a problem with both of us because the Bible it, it specifically commands us whether we have an art against somebody or whether the art is against me from somebody, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon be each of us to realize and to recognize that one of us or both of us should be making our way to the other. And so nobody is exonerated from this. Isn't that something? Nobody's exonerated. Now keep in mind also, make sure, make sure if you don't think the other individual knows that there's a problem, then make them aware of it. Don't get, don't become silent. Don't become, don't be, don't have the spirit of avoidance because that will lead into resentment and bitterness. It will lead into isolation. And so reconciliation takes time. And depending on how severe the wound is, it doesn't happen overnight. Although depending on the attitude of both individuals, the process can be sped up or, or 
the process can be delayed. Depending on the attitude of both individuals, the process can be spared up or it can be delayed. Let me ask you a question. Sometime between now and the time you go to bed tonight, search yourself. Lord, shine the spotlight on me from heaven. Do I knowingly, do I knowingly know anything that I have against anybody? Or do I knowingly know anything that someone has against me? Because if there, if there is something that, that we need to forgive somebody of, or somebody need to forgive us of, whatever the case, then don't put it off another day. I, I, I think sometimes us as saints of God, we, we think we're invulnerable. We think we're invincible. We think we're Superman and Superwoman. But that's not the case at all. Well, all of us are mere human beings who have been saved from our sins, and the Lord want to keep it that way. He want to keep us saved. And he want to keep us out of sin. And, and the word of God comes to show us ourselves. That's, what, that's the mirror for us, and that's the word of God. And, and sometimes I believe because of our because of our uh, our lack of knowledge of the Word of God, or our lack of study, our lack of meditation, you know, our our, our, our sparseness in in what we know about the Word of God, it it raises our attitude level. And because we don't know to do this, because we haven't, we haven't studied and we haven't searched the word to find that out. And we haven't asked God because, you know, uh, some, some, some people wait on to listen for the voice of God. But, uh, you know, uh, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm looking for an answer from the Lord, I'm searching his word. Lord, speak to me out of your word. Now, some of you may hear a voice. I, I, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You may hear a voice, you may, you know, but I want the Lord to, Lord, whatever it is, tell, show me through the word. Because I know, I know the word is true. And that voice, that voice we might hear, it might not be God at all. It might be the adversary. It might, it might be our inner self. But I don't, I don't want to know what I know. I want to know, Lord, what do you know about me? Show me through your word, please. Because as the song goes on to say, I want to be right, I want to be saved, I want to be whole. And so reconciliation takes time, it takes time. And as part of that cycle or that process, when you allow the spirit of total forgiveness to reign in your hearts, there's a, there, there's a certain peace which passes all understanding that resonates in your heart when you allow total forgiveness to reign in your heart. There, there is a certain peace. There's a certain peace that passes all understanding that resonates and it resonates and it grows and it gets stronger and bigger. Because once you forgive, the next time the situation calls for forgiveness is not as difficult to forgive. And there's always going to be something or somebody that we're going to have to say, please forgive me. Or a situation where uh, it's, going, it's going to take both of you to come to grips with. And I believe, I believe God is going to allow these things to happen. 
so that, so that we can see where we are as far as our attitude and our forgiveness level. And it's not just, <laughs> and it's not just amongst uh, the saints in the church. It's also amongst, you know, there, there, there are saints that live in the home. You know, husband and wife relationship, uh, uh, parent and children relationship, where both parents and children are saved. There, there are things that happen in the home where uh, one or the other has to ask for forgiveness. One thing I've never wanted to be ashamed of doing is asking my children to please forgive me. Or my wife. And, and, and I do it, I, I want to do it in such a way that uh, if, if they be, become, or at that point where they need to ask for forgiveness, that it won't be a problem. And so we always have to conduct ourselves toward one another as we would want others to conduct themselves, not just toward you, but also toward others. And so the cycle is, if you allow the spirit of total forgiveness to reign in your hearts, there's that peace that passes all understanding that resonates in your hearts. And this kind of attitude and spirit fosters unity, which will grow into reconciliation and fellowship. It fosters unity. Because when there's, when there's something that's dividing you, it's like a chain that has been broken. But, when the, well, but the thing that's dividing you, once it has been straightened by the two of you, then that chain is, is connected again. And, 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 that, and the chain is stronger than what it was than when it was divided. And now, because it is stronger, there's, there's fellowship. There's fellowship. And so uh, it, that it'll grow into reconciliation and fellowship. But that's that kind of attitude and spirit, it fosters unity. And where there's unity, you know the scripture, there's unity, there is strength. There's strength there. And so we, we and, and you know something, many times, Chuck, hey, you can ask, you can, you can ask for forgiveness, or, or you can tell your brother, please forgive me. It's, that's not, that's not showing a sign of weakness. It's not showing a sign of timidity. But it's showing a sign of strength. It's showing how strong you are. Showing how strong your attitude is. It's showing that, that you, you're serious about your salvation. You're serious about serving Jesus. But the adversary, he'll play, he'll play with your mind. He'll play with your mind. Y'all better watch out for the adversary because he will play with your mind. He show you everything. Oh, oh, I, I don't want it, it wasn't me, it was them. Watch out. The adversary gonna play with your mind. He's gonna show you everything wrong. He's he going to show you, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. They were wrong. He's going to show you all of that. <laughs> Beware, adversary, the devil goes to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And don't let him catch somebody out there isolated. He's going to really play havoc on you. And so this kind of attitude and spirit, it fosters unity, which will grow into reconciliation and fellowship. On the other hand, when you dwell on resentment and isolation, the likelihood of reconciliation probably won't happen, at least not at that time. Anyway, it's not going to happen. And the question is this right here. Do you want peace of mind or do you want to dwell on resentment and bitterness? Because if you, if you don't want peace of mind, and can I, let me share this with you. 
if you got an attitude towards somebody, if, if you got unforgiveness in your heart or, or you believe that somebody needs to forgive you, every time they're in your presence, what, it does, what does it do to your attitude? Just their mere presence in your presence, something rises up in you. And that should not be. That should not be because what you're saying is, oh, when they come around, they're going to dictate how I feel. Don't let anybody or anything dictate how you feel. You feel that way because you want to feel that way because you got peace in your heart and peace in your mind. Some people know how to say things to, to others to, that, that, that afflict them off. And what has happened, you have become the puppet on their string. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Let's go a little bit further. That old age cliche that says to err is human and to forgive is divine. Well, the power to forgive comes as a divine gift. The power to forgive comes as a divine gift. It's because we choose to forgive, but God empowers, look at this, we choose to forgive, but God empowers our forgiveness. When your attitude is right and you choose to forgive, God, on the other hand, he empowers your forgiveness. In other words, he strength, he strengthens, he strengthens, he, he gives, he gives, he gives power to your words and to your attitude because of your attitude of wanting to forgive an individual. And so when we choose to forgive, God empowers our forgiveness. And the desire for vengeance can be so overpowering that without God's intervention, look at this, the desire of vengeance can be so overpowering that without God's in, 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 in intervention, genuine forgiveness rarely takes place. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't want forgiveness and your desire to get vengeance upon an individual, that can be so overpowering that without and without God's intervention, genuine forgiveness will rarely take place. That's a sad connotation. You ask the question, what you know? Why all this? Why all this on, on, on forgiveness? Why all of this? Why do, why do we need to know how to forgive? Basically, because we, uh, we sometimes we just we just merely just say the words. But see, forgiveness goes deeper than just saying words. You remember what Jesus said, the Apostle John in First John. He says, uh, uh, "The love not, Lord children." He said, "Love not in word and in tongue, but how? Talk to me, in deed and in truth." Oh, anybody, anybody can say this and say that. You know, anybody can say, I love you. Anybody can say, I, I forgive you. But those are just mere words. They can become clouds without water. But when you totally forgive, when you forgive an individual from the heart, not only are you telling them that, but you're showing them that, look, I really mean this. And to show you I really mean this, I want, let's have fellowship. Let's have a conversation. Let's dialogue. Let's be helpers one of another. Let's pray for one another. If you want to see you as an individual or a group or a church or and council or an organization or global missions, I dare us 
to forgive one another of anything that we knowingly know that's between us or amongst us or with us or in us. If you want to become stronger, if you want to become, if you want to become more godlike, then tonight before you go to bed, before you go, before you lay your head down, ask the Lord, Lord, shine, shine your spotlight from heaven on my soul. If there's something in me that needs to be taken care of, Lord, help me. Because I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. And so that old age cliche that says to heirs human to forgive is divine. The power to forgive comes as a gift. We choose to forgive, but God empowers our forgiveness. And so we just can't say I forgive you because words can many times be empty volumes of air and space. But first John again tells us love not in word or in tongue, but love in deed and the truth. And that lower love also carries with it forgiveness. Because you can only love in deed and the truth when there's proper forgiveness in your attitude. If there's unforgiveness there, you can't love me in deed and in truth. Because uh, your unforgiveness is preventing you from doing that. <laughs> you know, watch people sometimes, you know. Y'all are y'all observers? Are y'all people ob observers? You know, I, I love observing things, observing people, observing situations. You know, I like to observe things, to see how it plays out, to see what could have been done. And at the same time, you have, you have to put yourself in, a situ in that situation. You know, if you were in a situation, how would you have conducted yourself? You know, what would you have said? You know, you know, uh, most, most people have a game plan, but uh, when when the game is on the table, you know, you don't know what you're going to do until it happens. But at least have at least have a mindset, at least have a goal that uh, if such and such goes this way, then this is what I plan to do. Might not always happen as you plan, but at least you have a plan. Because if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. You understand? If you fail to plan, you're going to plan to fail. And so uh, to further explore this forgiveness, I was amazed, you know, the Lord led me to it, and I'm just going to touch base on this, and uh, we'll, we'll deal with it next week. Uh, but the Lord showed me something that, uh, in the book of Genesis. I and mean, I'm going to say this and then uh, we, we'll wrap this up. But, but he showed me something in the book of Genesis. Don't you know God used nine chapters in the book of Genesis, chapters 37 through chapter 45, to tell of the life of Joseph and all that he went through. Look at this, which resulted ultimately in forgiving his brothers. Isn't that something? Nine chapters, chapter, chapter 37 through chapter 45. There's more concerning Joseph and Jacob now, but in these particular chapters, God used these particular chapters to show how he brought Joseph, all that he went through to ultimately get to a point where he had to forgive his brothers. And I mean, he totally forgave his brothers of all that they did to him. You know the story of Joseph? His father made him a coat of many colors. Oh, that raised the attitude level amongst the other brothers. And another thing, keep in mind, uh, Joseph was the only child of Jacob and Rachel until Benjamin came along, of course. But, but, but here, J Joseph got this coat of many colors. 
And to add matters worse, Joseph became a dreamer. Oh, he said, uh, the dreams that he dreamed, oh, his father and his mother and his brethren, they're going to bow to him. And because of Rachel and Jacob's uh, attitude and their love for, jo for, for Joseph, you know, there was, a, there was some resentment there amongst his, amongst his siblings. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And keep in mind, Joseph was a type of Christ. Joseph was a type of Christ. Because in the end, Joseph is going to totally forgive his brothers. He's not holding anything against them. And, and, I, and I believe if he had the words, he would, have said, he would have said to his brothers, Lord, forgive them for they know, they know not what they do. Here they are. They, 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 took, the, they took the boy's coat. They slew an animal and put the blood of the animal on his coat and took it back to the daddy. And the daddy just mourned because he knew that his son was dead. And this was Jacob's beloved son. But God, in his infinite wisdom and in his own providence, used nine chapters to talk about Joseph to end up telling us today that Joseph totally forgave his brothers. And if Joseph did that to his brothers, biological brothers, you might want to call them half that, this, that, and the other, whatever they were, they were still his biological brothers. How much more should we as spiritual brothers and sisters forgive one another? I'll leave it at that until next week. But let us continue to search ourselves. Let, let, us not hold, let us not hold grudges and attitudes and animosity toward each other. Because God wants his kingdom, he wants his church to grow, to get bigger and stronger. And they cannot do that where we have all of these isms and schisms toward each other. But if we would eliminate those and begin to allow love to grow amongst us, Lord, have mercy. You'll see us doing all kinds of exploits, doing things that we wouldn't even have, have, have thought possible to do. But all things are possible through Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you once again, oh God, this evening for your goodness and for your mercies. Thank you for once again for our time spent together this evening. Lord, continue to bless your people, oh God. Help us, Lord. Help us to hold the bar high in serving you because you're the God of glory. We thank you and we praise you. Remember those who are looking this way for prayer, those who are standing in need of whatever it is that you can supply them with. Lord, do it for me with thank you and give your name praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Dr. Phil. Mr. Gilda, thank you. We have a couple questions. I'll read one question and then I'll let uh, the other person ask that question. The first okay. question I have, um, if, you, if someone borrows money from you, and they never pay you back. And then they come around and ask for money again and you don't give it to them. Does that mean you didn't forgive them? It don't mean that at all. It just means they ain't pay you back and you're not gonna loan them anything else till they pay you back. Now, I don't know if y'all were on Sunday school, but evangelist Jackie Wheeler, uh, not this past Sunday, Sunday before last, I think she taught. If you remember, she, she talked about that, about that, uh, about the one that borrows money. Remember that? And, and no, they should pay you back. They should pay you back. Now, if there's, if there's a problem why they can't pay you back or couldn't pay you back, then, you know, that's, that's up to you. That's up to you. And no, that does not mean that you didn't forgive them because the wicked, remember that, the wicked borrow and pay not again. So, so if, if you borrow money from somebody, you know, or if somebody do a job for you, you know, they did your hair, they cut your grass, you know, whatever they did, you know, don't, don't, just, don't just think that, don't think that they're doing it for free. They are, they're sweating, you know, and sometimes they're using their products to do your, do, you know, do things for you. 
So no, no, the wicked borrow and don't pay back again. If you borrow something, then pay back. If you can't, and now another thing, don't, don't, don't get, don't get, don't become silent either. You know, some people become silent. They ain't gonna say nothing. They, and they're hoping you don't say anything. All right. And there was another question, Brother Joseph. Yes, sir. <laughs> ask your question. Maybe, maybe I should ask uh, let Evangelist Willa uh, answer that question. <laughs> what was Praise the Lord, District Elder. Praise the Lord. Okay, so as you were speaking about forgiveness and I, it came to my memory that I, I believe I'm forgiving, right? But mm -hmm. I do something and I, and this is, I just wanted to just put it out there to just to see, I do something. I remember, how do I say this? Same I remember it. <laughs> I remember it and I kind of, you know, I just kind of, I, it's similar to like a personality trait. You know, when I when, when I see certain things that someone exudes or the their actions, the way they the way that they move, I just mm. remember that. Mm. And so with that understanding, I might not maybe associate myself in certain situations. I might hold back on certain situations. You see where I'm going? Like I I I, I change when I find out certain things that are part of that person's personality or action plan. And I, I, I just change accordingly. Yes, I forgive you. No, I don't, you know, bring it back up. No, yes, I love you. I have to, because I have the Holy Ghost on the inside. I use that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, certain things I might not just, I might not trust you with. Certain things I might not, you know, I might not do with you because of what happened in the past. I'm just trying to figure out, am I in the wrong because of that? Or am I doing okay? I don't think you're wrong. I think you're just being cautious. You know, you're just being cautious. Um, you know, if you know an individual does certain things or acts in certain ways, I think you're just being cautious. I don't know if it answers your question now, but uh, you know, I don't, you know, you, you're not really being specific, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ask you to be specific, but uh, just by what I'm hearing, um, I, would just, I would just say that you're being cautious. Thank you. Okay. No Continue to be cautious. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, District Elder Taylor, for another yes, powerful sir. Bible class. Thank you so much. And those that tune in on Facebook, thank you for tuning in. God willing, we'll see you this time next week. Same time, same location. God bless you and we love you. Now, now let's receive Bishop Leslie. Powerful teaching tonight, Mr. Gail Taylor. Powerful teaching. And certainly, we certainly do thank God. This is very serious, really. Uh, you look at the, what is being said here, total forgiveness. Now that's our move. That's the move of a child of God. Total forgiveness. And then complete healing. That's God's move. We got to make our move before God makes his move. Praise him, because when someone does something to you and pluck your first nerve, second nerve, third nerve, and last nerve, praise him. You are mad. Praise the Lord. And they pluck your nerve and you holding it in your heart, not forgiving. But now this, this teaching tonight, uh, when someone goes against you like that, pluck your last nerve, the forgiveness is our responsibility. Forgive so that you can move forward in the Lord. And when you forgive, then the Lord even picks it up also and does his part. He gives complete healing. 
So that's a good deal. Amen. God bless you. We're having some good teaching tonight. Hang in the Bible class. This girl tale is being used of God. Praise him. And this is addressing our spiritual need, our spiritual food, our spiritual meal. Uh, because the enemy comes against us like a flood. The devil got us on his hit list. But the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against that devil. And the spirit of the Lord is the Holy Ghost. And that's another reason why you need to really make sure that you got the Holy Ghost when you cried out, Abba, our Father. But after you dealt with a whole lot of situations that the devil have offered, praise him, you got to really set the Lord uh, in your heart, hold on to him, my God, so that you can come out with victory because the devil not going to give up. Praise him, the devil's not going to give up. He's going to go all the way. Because the devil thinks that he's going to he's going to make it, but we know what the devil's going to end up as. We're going to, he's going to end up in the lake of fire. Thank you so much for the great teaching and bless everyone for your participation and your presence. Uh, Sunday school and my Bible classes can't do us any good if we don't be in the present when uh, the teaching is being done. Praise him. And the teaching that is being done is that is not only food, but it's ammunition uh, to fight against the wiles of the devil because the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy all of us from the pulpit to the door. He has no respect to prison. But we got to understand we got the equipment and we got everything that we need to get the victory over the devil. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God bless you. All right. Did you hear that announcement that uh, Elder Philip gave? And, and that announcement shows that all of us, all the members of the organization uh, will get their registration, their membership card, through the system. And, and of course, uh, some of us didn't get your um, uh, your card last time and whatnot and all. And we've been dealing with this matter because of some things that was in the system that wasn't spitting out uh, the membership cards. And of course, I had a little something to say about that. Praise the Lord, because I believe that everybody that's a member, everybody that get their membership card uh, is a member, uh, a member that will be recognized. And I want everybody, and that's what the organization started out to be a member organization. And everybody got their respective membership cards. And, and of course, this last year, you remember some, you might not have received your card and, and whatnot, uh, but. Um, I kind of jacked them up. I said, listen, we got to get these cards out so that everybody can receive their cards. So everybody will receive a membership card from PCAF. Praise the Lord. And you are a member of the PCAF International. Praise the Lord. And when this system is over with this time, everybody ought to have their respective membership card. Because quite a few of you did not get your cards. Praise him. And uh, and so uh, this system now is going to tighten up like it's supposed to, where everybody gets a membership card from the PCAF. This is a membership organization. Praise him. And so therefore, uh, we are thanking the Lord because we see that they are now going to really make sure that everyone get their membership card. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, thank the Lord for uh, the service tonight and Bible class tonight. Praise God. God is so good. And remember, Bible class is food for the soul. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord. Uh, we we would need to announce uh, Mother Brockington, uh, Bishop Brockington's wife, passed away. And we are praying much for Bishop Brockington and the uh, church membership, praise him as he was sick for a good little while. 
uh, but she went on, but absent from her body, she is present with the Lord. And let us pray for uh, Bishop Brockington and Emerson Jr. and his family and the whole church family. Praise him. And we are praying for them. Um, oh, glory to God. Uh, let's listen. Praise him and get people that uh, really want to hear you, the word of God. Get them to turn on at WYCB. Praise the Lord and hear the broadcast on Saturdays. Praise the Lord. And the Lord is is got the word on, and we want to make sure uh, that you invite many of your friends uh, to listen to the broadcast because it's just pure word. Praise the Lord, and we thank the Lord that we uh, set it up so that we can have that uh, word on the radio uh, from 1.30 to 2 o'clock on Saturdays. All right. Now, let us be a blessing. Uh, remember, uh, the, uh, be a blessing to our um, church as far as your offerings and your tithes and whatnot. Keep on doing that. The Lord is blessing Church of Jesus Christ, and we are um, thanking the Lord for everyone's faithfulness and stewardship. I think that's all I need to say tonight. Amen. God bless you again. Thank you so much, this together, Taylor, for a great teaching. Father, let's pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so happy for the word that we've heard tonight. Help us not just to hear a word, but help us to apply your word to our lives. So when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we can lift up that word against the enemy. My God, thank you so much for the fellowship that we're having here. In Bible class, thank you so much for the Lord. You are using uh, the man of God in a mighty way and help us to appreciate your word and apply it to our lives. Dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time. We ask you to do this for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Peace be unto the saints. Peace be multiplied. Peace be multiplied.